Can you record that? You're recording that. <laughs> Everybody, it's time for another episode. So um, before we get started, I did want to say that um, I hope you all had a really great Thanksgiving and I wanted to say how much I really appreciated the comments back to me from some of you um, letting me know that you also were at the children's table um, growing up. So that was really fun to hear. A couple of things. Um, I'm gonna be talking about is just um, some more memories of uh, my Christmas. So um, to begin, we're not having a cooking demonstration. We'll get to that later. Um, but I just wanted to touch base also, oh, and before I forget, I wanted to um, let everybody know that, that celebrated Hanukkah. I hope that everybody had a really great Hanukkah. Um, and that you all got to spend time with your family and friends and get to do your feast and, and all of that stuff. And um, again, I, and I just hope that y'all had a really great time. Also, as you can probably tell by now, I'm not, um, I, I didn't write anything down. I'm trying to just go from my memory and, and what I had in my head and just trying to uh, hopefully do it this time. So we'll see what happens. So bear with me. As I said, I wanted to talk about my Christmas. Um, Christmas is my favorite holiday. It um, always has been. It has a lot of meaning for me. And um, so I just wanted to try to give you guys a quick rundown of my Christmases growing up. So Christmas Eve, um, we all would go to our um, churches. And then after church, we'd all go to my aunt and uncle's house. Same one where we always had Thanksgiving. And people would, you know, gather in and come in eight, nine o'clock at night after their church. And it wasn't until everybody was there that we were allowed to go eat. So we would all go downstairs, get a plate, fix our plate, tons of food, um, find a place to sit and eat. And then after everybody was done eating and some of that was cleaned up, we were allowed to um, open presents. And everybody picked a place in my aunt uncle's basement and it was always tradition that the youngest kids got to pass out all the presents. So for a long time, that was just me and my cousin. So we'd pass out all the presents and then you had to take your turn. So you had to wait because every person opened up a gift. So you had to go around the circle, which wasn't bad until my cousins got older and they got married and then their children got older and they got married. And then you, were, you have a room full of 40 people and then it just got to a point where we were like all right free for all everybody just open because you just you couldn't wait that long so christmas after all that was done on christmas eve um we'd of course say our goodbyes to everybody and in my family i don't know how it is in your family but in my family you literally go around to every person and hugs and kisses good night good night good night good night so my dad would always head out to the car to warm up the car and us kids would have our jackets on and our scarves and our hats and our mittens. And then we would sit there because my mom and her sister, Chatty Cathy's, um, another half hour. So there we would be sitting on the stairs of my aunt's house like this, sweating while my dad's sweating in the car because he's keeping it warm for us. So finally we'd get home and, you know, we wouldn't leave there maybe till one, two in the morning. And then Christmas morning came and then it was Santa. So we'd of course get up and see our gifts from Santa. And then later that day, we'd head over to my dad's parents' house and have dinner over there. And then we would go back over to my aunt's house, which was always cool because then I would have my gifts from Christmas Eve as well as what Santa brought me. And I would take all of that with, my, with me to my aunt's house because my cousin, who I've talked about before, um, it's like the same age as me. So we'd have, you know, things to play with and it was cool. So that was usually like our Christmas Eve and our Christmas. Then for New Year's Eve, that was spent at our house, which was really cool. And um, so apparently our family and friends would all come over to our house for, for New Year's Eve. 
and you know of course the adults are having their adult beverages whiskey sours were popular back then and it's rumored that apparently when i was two or three i would go around to the empty glasses and take the maraschino cherries out and eat the maraschino cherries and to this day i still love maraschino cherries um and there was a picture and i so wanted badly to find this picture but i i wasn't able to but anyway so again, we're, we're there and we're having fun and we're watching Dick Clark because, you know, he was who you watched on New Year's Eve. So about 10 minutes before the ball was gonna drop, everybody ran into the kitchen and picked their musical instrument. And then we go out in the living room and when the ball started to drop and we got to like 10, we all started 10, nine, eight, and as soon as that ball hit zero, we all run outside and just start banging pots and pans. I don't know if anybody else ever did this, but we just bang pots and pans. And depending on if you really wanted a really nice tinny sound, you'd use metal. But if you wanted a little bit of a more deeper sound, you'd use this. And these, these are not lids. These are symbols. I mean, come on. And you would just scream at the top of your lungs, Happy New Year. And we'd all be banging. I'm sure our neighbors loved us. But what was really cool was we would like stop for a minute and on the other side of the neighborhood, you would hear them doing the exact same thing. So then it was like, oh, somebody else is out and we would just go crazy. So of course it was cold because it was in Pennsylvania. So we wouldn't stay out that long, but that's how we celebrated and run in the new year was by banging pots and pans. And then, um, of course, everybody, you know, made their way home. And then New Year's Day, it was tradition that we had pork, sauerkraut, and mashed potatoes because that was supposed to bring you good luck in the year ahead. So we still do that to this day. So that's just a little look into how my family, my crazy family, celebrated um, the holidays. And like I said, Christmas was my, and is my all-time favorite um, I have, like I said, many, many uh, wonderful memories of Christmases spent in that basement at my aunt and uncle's house. And there's uh, nothing that I would ever give up to, to get rid of those memories. There is one funny little story that I do want to share. After we moved down here from Pennsylvania, of course, you know, my mom was the one who did all the cooking for Christmas and everything. And when she passed, I took over Christmas, just like my brother took over Thanksgiving, I took over the Christmas. So my mom would always make, we'd always do turkey, potatoes, stuffing, and a vegetable. And the vegetable my mom always did was carrots with peas, sliced carrots in peas. But my mom would get the big carrots and peel them and peel them and slice them and dice them and peel them and dice them. And the first year that I went to make dinner, I'm standing in Publix and I grabbed a bag of the pre-cut carrots and I started to cry. And my husband's like, what, why are you crying? And I'm like, do you think my mom would be upset with me if I used pre-cut carrots? Like if I did, I didn't cut them myself. And my husband's like, seriously? So that's something that I just, to this day, I just kind of always get a little laugh out of because I was so, I wanted to do her so proud. And uh, that was so hard for me to say, okay, I can get the pre-cut carrots and not just do them myself. Um, but anyway, I think I've chatted on long enough. I really hope that um, each of you, however you celebrate, big, small, loud, quiet, um, you guys just have a great Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And um, I truly wish um, nothing but joy and blessings for everybody. And uh, I just look forward to 2022. Here we come. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.